Friends, anybody watching this channel probably knows who Eric over at Hand Tool Rescue is. Eric makes my little wrench that I carry with me everywhere I go. And one of his recent projects was called the Fractal Vice, and I'll put it in the PIP here. He had to recreate some parts to build it. But in his research, he discovered the patent for a fractal chair. And he's been toiling with how to make that come together. And it's been a real mind bender for me as well, so I think we're going to build one. I'll leave a card up in the corner to Eric's Fractal Vice Rebuild, but let's move on to this Fractal Chair. I have here some half-inch cold rolled steel bar. I think that should do nicely to make the part you sit on. And I think 22 inches is a good width, so we'll cut eight 22 inch bars. Now we'll use this washer, we'll weld two bars onto it, and we'll drill a hole for a pivot point, and that'll give us our first level of fractal movement. Now we'll center punch and drill these washers, and then weld the bars onto them. Then we can move on to the next stage. Okay, so I drilled a hole and I put a pin in there. That will allow me to locate my washers in the same place every time. I think I should put another alignment device on there though to make sure it's exactly the same every time. Okay, so each of these does this, and it will, yeah, I think we'll mount it like that. And then this will give us our next level in the fractal movement. We'll uh, just set that inside there. And then we'll move on. So I'm going to need eight half rings for these to slide in. And we'll just cut these four in half, and that'll make eight. Now all those fit perfectly, but they're a little bit longer than they need to be, so we'll, uh, we'll just trim the excess. But, you, know, you see we've got a, got a pretty good motion there. Okay, we want the spacing to be the same between each segment as it is between the bars there. So. From here we'll drill those second stage bearings, then trim off the excess length. After that we'll bolt the first stage rockers onto the second stage inside bearings, then we'll go on to create mounts for the outside bearings. So stage one is just these rockers that just do this. Stage two is these bearings that do this. Stage three will be to tie two of these together so the entire assembly can do this. This is our two stage two outer bearings. And this will be our stage three inner bearing which will ride in yet another ring like this. Now we need to tie these two outer bearings together on the final stage. And then we'll build the chair frame. The half circles of square tubing are working pretty good on the rest of it, so I think we'll just continue with that same theme and make some larger half circles to create the final stage. So the power roller was working fairly well, but it wouldn't get a tight enough circle. I had to switch to another roller that I have, and it does not roll as well, but it does make a tighter circle.
so there's our third level bearing. Now what we need to do is mount that to a chair. For the chair frame, we're going to start by building the back. So we're going to use the 7 8 steel tubing and we'll bend it with the conduit bender. I know I want it 32 inches tall, so we'll put a mark there at 32. So looking at this conduit bender, there's a little arrow there and a note by that that says, it says stub 6 inches to arrow. So if we want the top of the back 32 inches tall, and I do, we need to subtract that 6 inches. So it gets, that brings us back to 26. So that's where we put the arrow and we do the bend and the top should be on that line. So there's our chair back. The top of the back needs to lean back. We use a bender to put a little angle on the legs. Now, if that looked like I was struggling, something I didn't mention, this is 4130 chromoly steel. There's my chair back. That's looking good. Now the clip that you just saw was shot on February 8th, 2022. And today is March 1st, 2023. I let this project lay without touching it for over a year. And uh, you may be wondering why I'm back on it now. And that's because Eric has finally decided to build his fractal chair. Now on to mocking up the whole thing on the welding table. We'll see if the motion is what it's supposed to be in my mind. I'm hoping to get mine done before he finishes his. And we'll be the first to admit that his is going to be quite a bit nicer because one of the things he's done I, I suspect he has used a, a service like Send Cut Send to cut all his material. He's got roller bearings in his, which is a nice addition. The one thing I don't like about it is uh, it just relies on gravity to hold everything in place. Anyway, the action, uh, it's, it's surprisingly good. All right, so I'm really digging the action, and it, it appears that uh, this gravity bearing situation is is not going to be too bad. Now we need to mount these on a chair and sit this whole arrangement down into it. But before we go there, I think what I want to do is tie these two outer layers together. And we'll just do that with a couple of pieces of square tubing. We'll weld them together. Then I'll break it free of the table. And then this entire unit will lift off and we can work on the frame that it'll sit down into. And while I'm doing prep, I think another thing I want to do is make some guide plates for the side here. And I don't think they need to be that big either. I think all they need to be is, is big enough to keep this loop from sliding off of that one. So some semicircles should be fine. And it's not very smooth. The fit was really tight on those side plates, so I had to bend it out. And once I did that, it provided a good amount of clearance and started working. Oh yeah, that's, that's nice, that's working good. The next thing to do is cut some slots into the front leg so the square tube arc will slide in there like a mortise and tenon. We'll weld all that together and move on to the back leg. Then with some fitting, it finally begins to work. At this point, I think some lubrication would go a long way to help out. Then we'll mark the back leg and cut another mortise so it'll slide in uh, just like the front. The fit from the bandsaw wasn't the best, so we use a belt sander to open it out a little bit. Okay, now that's not the best fit, but luckily with a MIG welder, I could fill that no problem. Turns out that was a pretty big gap and it took several passes to fill. And there it is the fractal chair. I still need to figure out what to do about a back. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do for the back is get some lawn chair web belting and uh, weave it in, just, you know, just like a lawn chair. And if you want to see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. I know it wouldn't be right to come this far and not sit in it. 
Well, how about that? <laughs> it works. <laughs> So that's all for this time, and if you're not familiar with Eric over at Hand Tool Rescue, by all means, go check him out. He does some amazing work. It's unbelievable, some of the things he does. I'm happy to answer any questions in doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like, and have a good one.